Good morning, good evening, everybody. This is Jai Kumar. I'll be your host for today, and we will um, look at some of the design patterns, uh, discuss it, uh, discuss a couple of them, understand why design patterns, uh, and what I'll also like uh, it to be a little bit interactive. So, any point in time you have uh, any questions or, or comments to make, uh, please uh, use your chat window, uh, send, uh, select, send questions and uh, you know, just press enter and we should have questions here uh, i'll try to answer the question if they are in the in the flow of discussion if uh, not uh, in the flow of discussion then we'll definitely be answering it by the end of the session so what do we want to uh, really look at today what is what is our objective we want to know uh, what really software design patterns are uh, we'll see why do we need it and um, we'll look at uh, a few design patterns uh, in the behavioral style of design patterns. But before I go uh, and uh, you know talk a lot about the objective, I think I owe you an introduction. You should know who is it talking, right? Um, as I said, I'm, I'm Jay Kumar. I am an enterprise architect. Um, if you care to know about years of experience, it's, it's over 11 years uh, entirely into design and architecture stuff. I've done a lot of uh, application development, uh, still hands-on, do a lot of coding as needed, um, have made, built systems, um, enhanced it, maintain it, so know how systems work in production. Uh, have even uh, scrapped some of the systems. Um, because they just became become unmaintainable. Uh, at heart, uh, I am a solution provider, like uh, complex problems, and therefore I'm always interested in some of the patterns that we see, and therefore I'm here talking to you with a topic of, of design patterns. So with that uh, description, uh, let me get uh, going with the objectives. Um, I hope we are clear with the objectives. And then we'll talk a little bit about software uh, design patterns. First, we'll see what is a pattern, right? A pattern is some way of uh, repetitive. Uh, let me ask a, a question. I have uh, at least one participant, and participant reporting that my voice is not clear. Can somebody else uh, please uh, confirm? Am I audible enough? Just want to be sure that you guys are able to understand what we are we're going to discuss today. Okay, I have uh, multiple confirmation uh, that my voice is clear. Uh, might be a problem with the recipient. Um, we will make the recording available in case you know if you are interested in and and miss something. So let's come back. A pattern, right? A pattern is something which is uh, recurring. A pattern is when you walk out of your office or your home, uh, you see that all the all the cars have four wheels and not five wheels or three wheels or you know six or eight wheels. Car has four wheels. That's a pattern, right? And then um, these patterns, because they are repeatable, they are observable. And then when these patterns are solving certain problems they are really the solution patterns if the solution is in terms of some design that can be repeated it is a design pattern now since a design pattern is a repeated repeated solution obviously it must be solving some sort of repeated problem and therefore the definition of a design pattern will become that it is a repeated problem or recurring problem to a recurring or uh, it is a recurring solution to a recurring problem that's what the design pattern is by the very definition of the pattern because it is observable we should also appreciate the fact that these patterns are discovered and never invented right um, people sit and observe many many systems to see how a particular problem across these systems could have been solved what is the solution that is the most optimal and that becomes pattern 
and therefore you will see that these patterns do not evolve every other day these patterns are uh, these patterns evolve over the period of time right the pioneer people doing this kind of work were gang of four and for the those of us who are into some sort of design this is a bible right the original book as we call it they um if i'm not mistaken they cataloged 23 design patterns um, you can always read that book and it is a fantastic book to read right however it may not be a book for mere models it but it is a book that puts in constraints and forces and gives a solution in a particular way it's kind of a pretty old book if you ask me still prevalent um, but will give you some snippet in pseudo code or c styles code as i said bible it is the original book they are the first guys who came up and cataloged the existing patterns the design pattern uh, space has evolved from what it was um, there are new patterns uh, that we keep discovering some of them very powerful some of them are not so powerful maybe a variation of the base pattern and all that stuff so that space is really um, can become complicated if you start reading the scientific journals and therefore it might help uh, if we come and discuss some of the patterns together as as a team and ask questions and you know learn from each other's experiences so that was about design patterns uh, then at a broad level and remember we are going to restrict it to design pattern at an application level uh, there are there are four categories that we generally go with uh, now many of the existing literature will want you to categorize into three categories uh, namely creational structural and behavioral however uh, we also have another category of some concurrency design patterns these are something to do with how do you solve some of the inherent problems of parallelism when you are trying to do some sort of threading right some sort of parallel execution in your code and then underneath each of these categories there are many different uh, patterns uh, and um, you know in general we go in depth with all today we will be going with uh, the behavioral category but let's briefly talk about what each of the pattern will really mean a creational category of a design pattern is generally something to do with how do i create an instance of a of a class right um if you are any conversant with uh, some of the languages like java or c sharp um, at a very very primitive level i will say that creational design pattern will say how do i eliminate the use of new keyword it has a definite advantage by eliminating a new keyword uh, at a layman term but at a technical term by eliminating a responsibility of creating an instance of a particular type class has an advantage to client the client does not need to know or the client code does not need to know any complexities around how do i get an instance the client only needs to focus on how do i make use of this instance perhaps via an interface uh, also allows you to replace underlying structures if if the need be and therefore there are patterns like object pool and factory and singleton and abstract um, factory and so on and so forth maybe prototype a structural uh, category will take it uh, a different approach well we looked at how do i convert or you know get the object created but it is seldom that a single class will be able to solve a problem and therefore structural design pattern will combine multiple classes together to solve a specific problem in structural category these classes know about each other at the design time in fact when you code it the the, the types will be some of the adapter pattern or a decorator pattern or a um, composite pattern a flyweight pattern so on and so forth 
yet another category is a behavioral category wherein well we looked at how do i create an instance how are these classes related to each other in the behavioral category we look at how these classes talk to each other you know what is the communication path and then we say some of the problems could be solved by changing the way objects interact or communicate with each other and that's where we have some of the uh, design patterns such as chain of responsibility or mediator or observer so on and so forth and yet other category which kind of well relatively new to the to the world of uh, design patterns and i'm saying only relatively okay is a concurrency design pattern wherein we say okay given i am designing a parallel processing system an application how do i solve some of the inherent problem related to thread locking deadlock live lock how do i improve my system throughput the performance of the system in that we will be looking at uh, some of the reactor pattern the scheduler pattern thread pool thread specific storage uh, leader follower uh, and so on and so forth okay uh, there is a question coming in uh, from rakesh under which category do android patterns or otp generation password comes in uh, well when you are a designer uh, there nothing specific to a particular programming language so um, android pattern should be no different than any of these ones however we do sometimes confuse between a paradigm and a design pattern a paradigm makes use of specifics of a particular technology to implement a solution a single thread pattern for example is between a paradigm or a more specifically an idiom an idiom than a design pattern it can be implemented only in particular particular programming language not every language will be able to support it so a repeated solution specific to a particular language becomes idiom and not really a design pattern okay uh, otp password generation will have various perhaps algorithms and not really a pattern or you know a design pattern per se many strategies in fact there are strategy patterns that you can use wherein you can change the algorithms okay now there are some uh, participants uh, who have raised hand uh, would like to know if there is any specific question in which case you can send a question um, or you know kind of unraise your hand uh, another question which is uh, different but since i'm going to make a transition from this uh, this particular screen i'll answer uh, manas is asking what is agile well agile is a software development process uh, and is not anything to do with a software design pattern now uh, we have talked about a uh, little bit about design patterns what they are let me try and emphasize why design patterns are, are important to us well we can all be good programmers we can write a very cryptic program which will allow us to you know kind of showcase how good a programmer i am but that skill has a limitation that it can only solve certain localized problem and perhaps not be sufficient unless you tie it up with a good designing skills to become a production grade application if you are good at programming it just means that you know all the internals and workings of a particular programming language it does not necessarily translate into you being able to develop a good application in order to develop a good application the application needs to be simple for a complex problem and not the other way around and should be maintainable and should be understandable or be understood by your fellow colleague and likely the teams who are going to maintain it for the lifetime of the software in general the software will have a lifetime of perhaps 10 to 20 percent of the development time and perhaps 90 to 80 percent of the maintenance lifetime that's the entire life time of a software right the age of the software so it is likely that the software or an application is going to spend more time into the maintenance phase than in the construction phase 
and therefore it is important that the folks who are going to maintain the software know about the software and just programming skills are not going to be sufficient for that and that is where designing aspect comes into play and that is where the design patterns come into play wouldn't it be nice for you to go and look at the code and quickly deduce that well it is a factory pattern and i don't need to know every nitty-gritty every variable and every method the moment i know it is a factory pattern i kind of know how it will be working so if i am to support certain things maybe fix fix defects i already know where all it can be going wrong and how to fix it right that is how you build on top of what your earlier generation and i'm not saying age wise but you know in the logical processing of a particular software developer you can learn from your earlier generation that is during the maintenance even in the construction phase if you already know a particular solution to a particular problem it is good idea to start with that solution why reinvent the wheel that's the question that we as architects will always ask what's the benefit right for example we are not going to invent a new way for human to walk everybody walks almost the same way maybe some people run it if they are physically you know kind of uh, disabled or challenged they may be walking little differently nevertheless they walk that's a pattern right so design patterns will make you efficient and will allow you to build better softwares that's why that's why design patterns are important the first pattern that we'll talk about um, uh, is a chain of responsibility pattern uh, sometimes uh, it is called also chain of receivers but let me pause and see if there are any any questions that you have in terms of design patterns the applicability of it or the importance of it okay uh, no outstanding questions as always let them come in let's talk about chain of responsibility in fact let's step back let's not talk about just chain of response let's take a case um, many of us must be using some sort of uh, cellular data or cellular connection or even better maybe almost everybody will have some sort of bank and let's say um, you have a query to be made to the bank so what do you do you perhaps know the customer care number you pick up the phone and call the customer care it is likely that you will land upon an IVR, you know, interactive voice response. It'll ask you to punch in the key number, the 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 card number or your account number. May do some sort of validation and will give you a menu of, you know, what all you want to do. And then let's say that that particular uh, menu does not uh, suffice your problem. You have a very specific question as to why did your let's let's assume why was your account debited certain amount and you want to know that perhaps a standard IVR will not be able to tell you that it, it may tell you five transactions but not why they are there then it will ask you whether you want to talk to a customer care representative and you say yes you know you press perhaps nine or hash or whatever that is and you get routed to the next person you know the next processor and you tell he may do another level of validation you tell there was a transaction and i don't know why it was made and other stuff and he'll tell oh it was done on the internet banking and i don't know you know what is wrong do you want to lock your account and you say yes i want to lock my account but i also want to escalate it so this person may lock the account lock your web access no more transactions and then may send it to his supervisor or a specialized support who may handle the customer transaction dispute another department maybe and that person may give you some satisfactory reasons may not give you satisfactory reason based on that your call will get routed to many different parties perhaps end up doing filing a dispute complaint and you get some sort of service request you see that in life almost every time you are interacting with any customer care levels of support that levels of support is nothing but chain of responsibility in this particular chain every individual processing unit has some specific responsibilities assigned 
you know the first time you call up IVR as a processing unit has a responsibility of accepting your input and you know routing it accordingly maybe if you were just interested in checking your five transaction it'll tell you the transactions and you're done you don't need to go to the next level perhaps you want to block your card and you may even blocking card is these days IVR enabled but maybe you want to file a dispute you have to go to the next level the next level of support is going to just be handling certain specific type of queries and next level and next level what is advantageous here is you as a customer are only going to know about a customer care number to call and you do not care about how many processing levels or in this case receiver levels are there in the chain that's advantage of for you as a client what is the advantage for somebody who's providing you this customer care support they can internally change the way the requests are routed you know they can add in new processing units new receivers or remove certain processing units and you don't have to worry about it neither the service provider or support provider has to worry about how will be your experience that is the advantage of chain of receivers I can explain the screen uh, you know the request comes in first is received by the receiver one receiver one has reference to receiver two receiver one may re uh, may process the request in which case the call may return if it cannot it will send it to the next receiver and next receiver until the end of the chain is received right uh, we, you call it a tail of the list is hit in which case it cannot handle the the request may end up throwing an exception may end up creating a ticket in case of uh, our customer care support although the slide will say that um, a particular handler or receiver will say will um, will decide whether it can support a request or not this is a simplified view there exists a variation of chain of responsibility wherein all these receivers could be collaborative receivers and we'll talk a little bit about that but if you allow me i'll move on and show you a uml diagram of chain of responsibility from the client perspective client is still talking to the handler there may be many different concrete handlers implemented out of this interface or an abstract class what is important is a concrete handler has a reference to the handler some sort of handler right that some sort of reference is called a next reference or a next handler or a next receiver name is your your choosing but something which is next in the chain okay then if you are worried about uml three important elements a client a handler and a concrete handler a concrete handler remember in some of the implementations the name may change uh, in our implementation we name it, we may name it a support you know um, let's say a request processor abstract request processor and one is ivr processor and another is a human processor and so on and so forth but if you look at at, at a high, very high level handler concrete handler and client then here is uh, another problem statement that we perhaps kind of described it already uh, you give a problem statement to this particular chain uh, l1 support will try to resolve it right and if it is resolved then it is given back to a human as a solution if it cannot be resolved it may be sent to the l2 support which can come up and check if it is resolved and then if it is resolved given back to the the caller or the problem statement provider as an answer if it cannot be resolved it may go to cannot handle as an error condition well this chain can go on and on as long as you want then we described the solution already what is important uh, again kind of reiterating is that the user does not know what all kind of handlers or support levels are there user just needs to know the first and how by some means 
the chain of responsibility pattern does not talk about how does user come to know about the first handler or any any type of handler and therefore when you build an entire solution you may end up creating some sort of factory to give you that handler chain uh, that is when you go into solutioning but if you are looking at only at this particular pattern the user or the client code just knows that there is some sort of handler how many are there in the chain does not the client does not know is it in fact the client does not even know that there is a chain the client only knows that there is some sort of handler who's going to solve my problem uh, quick um, implementation in code this is a java code uh, you can implement an abstract class support uh, important is a reference to the next support class remember here we are calling support in uml we had shown it as handler uh, some sort of handle request uh, who's going to take some sort of uh, domain class in this case it is a support request this is a domain class knows about the support level or ticket status and whatever that you need to do in order to represent a particular request we will implement uh, the in the concrete handlers the in this case we are calling it an l1 support we are going to just do it very simple way right uh, for demonstration purposes the l1 support can only handle these these queries you know where can i download a particular file maybe you are calling edureka in this case right where can i download a particular file how much time will it take to learn maybe what is a fee and then L1 supports handle request will check if it can handle the query if it cannot handle the query It will just send it to the next level of support Right, it will say handle false is just implementation. It will iterate through find out if the question matches If matches it will say handle true set, set the status If it is not handle and if there is still a next support available it will say next support dot handle request if it is not there it may just say that it is an illegal argument i can't really help you then l2 support will look almost the same just that in this in this case we will be handling different set of queries how to run a project how can i create a mapping file what should be installed to run the the project maybe you want to install the demo projects almost the same implementation just that this is a different concrete class again does not have to be this is a very very trivial code that we are showing you just to elaborate on the design pattern than the actual logic of you know what does the handle request do then when you are let's say testing it again we are keeping a simple test case most of the professional guys will use something like JUnit but we'll keep it simple many levels are created uh, support 1 through L4 level 1 through level 4 and we create a chain we set the next handlers right L1 has the next handler as L2 L2 has the next handler as L3 L3 has the next handler as L4 so on and so forth and then we create a particular support request and we pass it note to L1 and we'll see what is the status then we will also create another support request and still pass it to L1 note guys we're still passing to L1 support only and it will be processed by whoever whoever is the right receiver for that kind of query There are some questions coming in and I will answer them. But before I answer those, uh, let me give you some more examples of uh, chain of responsibility, maybe at a Java E level. Those of us who may have worked on uh, servlet, there is a concept of filter. These filters are configuration based actually, but you need to really implement the filter interfaces. You can accept an incoming request apply a logging filter which will log all the request and then let the request flow to the next filter who could be which could be an authentication filter will check perhaps is this request really authenticated are there authenticating headers in the request or cookies and other stuff and maybe if it is it will then eventually let it go to the servlet and therefore 
in this case you will see that we are applying kind of orthogonal aspects if i may use that word orthogonal logic pieces of logic together to have a, a system that can log authenticate and do some real business logic wherein servlet does the real business logic and you can add and remove these filters at will many such examples so let me pause and answer some of the questions that i have already here okay the first question i have is from ajit what is the difference between a command pattern and chain of responsibility command pattern also looks similar uh structure like an action i'm just reading the raw question okay i'll try and answer it like an action class in the struts which with execute method action support abstract super class we have action chain and okay so i'll not read it further let's first try understand the difference between chain of responsibility and command in chain of responsibility the client is only talking to the first receiver and client does not even know that it is a chain of responsibility client is not responsible for even creating the first handler client has to be given that handler by some means whereas in a command pattern a command pattern is just some sort of pseudo language for example in the file menu you are going to say save that save button does not have any logic of saving the data it is just some sort of token that token is what we call command okay remember command on its own does not have any logic of execution also command will never delegate the processing to the next command the command will be executed by the what we call it the 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 receiver of the command an example could be a tv right the the remote control that you have which has on off button that on off button is really a command where does it get executed it get executed on the receiver of that command which is your television set so two different patterns can we say that struts again question from ajit uh, can we say that uh, action in struts framework is chain of responsibility pattern uh no not really in struts struts really a combination of a um, something called a front controller pattern right and um, and a request processor which is uh, which is going to be a facade pattern right so it the the action uh, classes in struts framework are not chain of responsibility okay in fact if you want me to be more precise than that struts is really a front controller followed by mvc okay and action classes are really the commands that get executed under the mvc framework where are these commands defined they are defined on your form tag right when you say maybe edit dot do edit dot do edit is the command where does it get executed on the under the um, struts framework right somewhere there will be an action which will get instantiated and executed uh, can i give uh, examples in jdk spring or struts the chain of responsibility i already gave you an example in standard java ee um, Uh, standard java ee uh, space the 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 web applications there is uh, another question which is quite interesting coming from um, mothyam if i am pronouncing it right pardon me if i am not um, how will you differentiate between a framework and design pattern very important question a design pattern is something that you have at an abstraction okay when you say chain of responsibility it is a abstract solution to some recurring problem however framework is something concrete you when you say 
spring it is a framework okay it is going to be collection of many different functionality that that framework offers which may and underneath be using many different patterns combined together a design pattern in other words is a very small aspect or very small contributor to the entire solution framework has a very specific goal in in its life for example spring will look at inversion of control and dependency injection as a base and then will provide many different things um, struts will look at how do i ease the uh, web page rendering you know how do i build the graphical user interface on the web pages and still be able to do it do the request processing two different pieces framework again is something that you use as your underlying underlying infrastructure to build your application design pattern they are something that is an abstract solution that you have to go implement code in order to get the benefits out of it what is uh, the other relationship if you understand the design pattern understanding various framework becomes much much easier right if i tell you that uh, let's say a um, in spring right in spring the application context is really a bean factory which is really a factory pattern you you get the point right you know that it is a it is a factory pattern out there okay if i tell you that really spring does it does the um, aspect orientation by using something called a proxy pattern you get it. it it is a proxy you never get a handle to a bean which is which has an aspect oriented the aspects weaved in okay perfect any any other question before i i move on and and look guys this particular session is to you i do not perhaps intend to cover all the all the patterns but i want to be able to answer your question and when you go out of this session i i hope that you have learned something something more than when you came in okay so with that let's uh, let me move on the next pattern that uh, i hope to cover today is a is a mediator pattern uh, another uh, very important pattern if you are worried about uh, a tight coupling between the objects again this is a behavioral kind of pattern which means that we will be controlling the way various objects communicate with each other as always let's start with an example let's say i own a, a house which i want to give out uh, give out on rent right? i want to rent it out and there are many people out there who would want to rent their houses out and there are many people out there who would want to um, lease a house or you know get some house uh, on rent now imagine a case if I have to go and talk to all prospective tenants or as a tenant one has to go and talk to all the landlords or you know house owners very chaotic thing it will be right but that's not how we we do generally in practice what do we do we go to an intermediary maybe an online property broker like let's say uh, a magic brick or you go to a local uh, estate agent who's kind of a broker who will uh, find perhaps a property based on your needs and then the initial that broker is going to do the initial conversation up, uh, upon the needs and may uh, offer and counter offer between a tenant and a, um, a landlord but remember the analogy breaks there right uh, there is a reason why we call it a broker but this is a middleman who is going to talk to the individual parties so that these individual parties don't have to interface with each other they don't even need to know about each other until the time comes perhaps to you know almost finalizing the deal wherein our analogy breaks remember there the analogy breaks but at least for the initial conversation these guys are not going to talk to each other you don't know where all you know a particular broker what all prospective tenant he kind of needs right 
he'll perhaps only let you know about those who are matching your criteria and similarly if you are uh, a prospective tenant he'll not tell you about all the properties if you are going to need only a 2 bhk house he's not going to give you tell you about a villa right or maybe a 1 bhk house or a penthouse or any of that sort so this mediator guy is going to kind of control the communication so obviously what could have been n into m communication paths right n landlords talking to m prospective tenants m into n mesh it is now really m into 1 and 1 into n communication so your number of communication paths have become simpler and on the both side of this communication you may be able to add new prospective tenants remove some prospective tenants add new landlords remove some landlords without affecting the other end of the communication everything is managed within the mediator right pretty simple thing to manage when you compare that m versus n communication okay when you look at mediator pattern this is how we show it on uml you have a mediator and you know this tenant and uh, the house owner or landlord we call it colleagues because they are interested in talking to each other just not directly so these are colleagues and then you have a concrete mediator which knows about concrete colleague you know a particular estate broker knows about particular parties interested in a specific kind of estate maybe uh, there could also be the land dealers, right? You are, you are looking for an open space plot. Not every estate agent deals into that. So maybe a different concrete mediator, different broker who's going to only deal in the in the in the land, open open land. Maybe another dealer who's only into a commercial uh, places to be rented out. So different concrete mediator and then you have different concrete colleagues the it is what is important is colleague knows about the mediator right not the other way around the mediator may not even know about the colleague it is the concrete mediator that knows about specific colleagues now there could be variations of that okay maybe sometimes you can wrap up the mediator and uh, concrete mediator together and do it do it in one go three important terms when you look at uml mediator colleague and concrete colleague obviously for uh, the the concrete mediator so let's look at another problem statement let's say you are to design a chat client okay and let's make it a little bit complex let's say a group chat you know wherein you me and other people are going to talk to each other and obviously if it is a group chat it will be n into n minus one communication right if i am sending out message to 100 different people 100 different people can also send out message to other 100 different people right each individual maybe there are uh, 101 participants in this particular group chat then how can we solve it so we already know that we the n into n minus 1 communication is messy we can't really survive with that so then we say okay we can actually do it via some sort of mediator a mediator has way of communicating to the you know to the colleagues and mediator can accept these colleagues you know these participants in this case what we are calling and there is a concrete mediator called chat mediator in this case which holds the references to the concrete excuse me to the concrete colleagues the concrete participants in this case they are going to be users i'll tell you that it will be in the next screen and then this concrete mediator is going to implement those methods such as add participant in which case it will add participants to its list and there will be a method called send message wherein it will send message to all the participants on that group chat except the one who has sent it right for example if i send you a message i don't want to see it back right i already know that i have sent it to you so we just said that okay send it to everybody in here for loop again this is a java implementation um, send it to everybody 
but the sender of it okay then on the participant style or on the colleague side we say that okay the colleagues know about the mediator who's the mediator right and colleagues has two methods in this case uh, send and receive a concrete colleague is going to be user and user when you say send on a user that send method is really going to send message to mediator and not any other participant because see at this point this participant or a user does not know about any other participant it only knows about the mediator so when it is asked to send a message it will send it to the mediator with this reference so that the mediator does not send the message back to this participant or this user and obviously there needs to be a receive method because maybe somebody else um, you know maybe Ajit on this particular meeting may be sending a message and I should be able to receive it as one of the participants in the chat so that is the concrete colleague again a test case we're going to keep it pretty simple I know some of us who are into the field for a long time may want to use it in a J unit style but not everybody knows it so we'll just keep it public static void main we'll create a chat mediator and we'll create maybe five different participants and see we are adding all these users to the mediator these users do not know about each other now if user user one comes and says hello everyone that hello everyone message will be received by all other four participants via mediator later on let's say a user named uh, Kaylee wants to or Brian wants to go away he may came, come and say mediator dot remove of course we have not implemented the remove method but we can and then after that let's say Alex comes and say how are you Brian who has left already is not gonna receive the message and Alex does not even know whether Brian was there or not does not need to know okay so that's how we can solve a problem where the communication between the parties can become M into N or any kind of complex mess well this was a chat example there are more uh, or some somewhat you know more elegant and yet simple solutions to when you go into something like a GUI a graphics user interface in this case this is a swing uh, application um, what it is going to do is depending on what is the contact name selected in this pick list it is going to update the contacts name it is going to uh, update the edit panel and maybe uh, sometime it may even show the picture of the person however picture of the person let's keep it aside for now and we'll come to it for now let's say if I select another user called Jay Kumar it will show my contact name and it will show uh, all other details here in the edit panel and I can edit and update so what happens if I don't know about mediator pattern I may end up that on the action perform of this particular pick list I will have to know that I have to go and update contact and I have to go and update the this particular uh, I have to go and update the read only contact as well as the editable contact well not only that imagine the moment I update a contact my read only contact should also reflect so that means this particular update or editor panel must know about the display panel too so you are entering into a tight coupling now let's say as your application grows you want to show a picture of Jay Kumar or a picture of Ajit or you know anybody else and then what happens you have to go and change the code in the pick list and maybe here maybe now because in update contact you will have to be able to upload a new picture right so your update contact the editor panel should also know about this new picture lot of communication between these parties you can simplify that by just saying that let's have a mediator which knows about all three or four panels and if anything changes in any of these panels that panel just tells it to the mediator and then mediator takes care of updating the respective or informing the respective panels to update themselves with the refreshed data okay 
so that's that's the mediator pattern I have an interesting question which I will answer now coming from Manish and the question is how is it different from observer pattern that is the name changes all rest of the GUI needs to be informed uh, very uh, very uh, prevalent question I get that all the time so thank you for bringing it up Manish the differentiation between the mediator and observer is going to be this observer pattern is generally going to be one-way street right in observer pattern what's going to happen the update contact uh, panel or the editor panel and the contact panel are going to be listening to the state change of the pick list however what happens in this case is if i change the contact editor panel and i say update contact maybe from brian uh, floor i say you know brian adams and say update contact that should also send the state change or you know i should not be using state change in this case but that should also tell to the pick list as well as the contact display panel that's look there is a change in this particular you know last name so what can you do if you start implementing the observer pattern the display panel as well as the editor panel needs to be the observers to the pick list the drop down i mean right similarly the drop down and the display panel should also be the listener of the change in the editor panel and now you know that let's say between editor and the uh, drop down both are listening to each other state change very soon you may end up doing an infinite loop both updating each other about you know i did a state change of course you can always plug that gap by saying that check whether state has really changed and only then the then take the reflection or only then reflect upon it of course you can do that but then you are using observer patterns from both think about it what is being observed is also an observer for the previous observer in this case the pick list happens to be an observer of editor panel and editor panel also happens to be an observer of pick list well it doesn't end there if you do the observer pattern that style both your pick list as well as your editor panel knows about each other so you have not gotten rid of the tight coupling tomorrow you add a display panel you have to add that display panel as a listener to the pick list the drop down as well as to the contact editor so you still know about what all components are there in your ui with mediator pattern however that does not apply mediator pattern every net panel is going to subscribe if i may use that word very very vaguely remember let me not use it every panel only gonna gonna tell about itself to the mediator and nobody else okay so that's the differentiation between the observer and the mediator pattern so Manish um, as well as Muthyam as well as Ajit I know you guys have asked, asked the question do let me know if I was able to answer it successfully or you know satisfactory anybody has any other consecutive question or subsequent question please feel free to ask we are almost towards the closure of the time but what I really want to be able to do if you allow me to is spend only a couple of minutes talking about observer pattern and since we are on the topic it's a good point to discuss in the observer pattern what happens is there is a subject which is being observed and there is some party interested in that subject maybe there is a stock right in a stock market a share market with a fluctuating value and I as a stock broker wants to be knowing about this stock well let me not say stockbroker or trader because you may end up refreshing your screen many a times maybe I am a casual uh, investor who wants to know if the stock price goes below a certain price so that I can go and buy it 
So instead of I inquiring every time about the price change, I can tell some intermediary that tell me when this stock price goes below certain limit. Maybe if you are into uh, if you use any of the um, you know trading platforms, they will allow you to set alerts. Those alerts at a very very high level are nothing but an observer pattern. What could be another example? Let's say there is a weather station and the weather keeps changing. The temperature changes perhaps. So and you want to know you are perhaps a broadcasting network, maybe a news printer, newspaper printer or a um, TV weather station, TV station, right? You want to know what is the temperature. It is unlikely that you would want to call up the weather station guy every now and then and tell ask, you know, what is it? Tell me what is the temperature rather you will have some sort of arrangement by which the weather station guy may call you up or send you a text or message or some sort of web feed to tell you that this is the temperature now. That's the observer pattern. Pretty simple. Uh, implementations may uh, cause certain problems in some cases. Um, today, perhaps uh, we may run out of time. Um, but let's also look at uh, a um, quick UML. Right. You have a subject which is the you know which is the which is the class under observation which we are interested in the state changes of and there are observer. The observer is generally an abstract or an interface. Uh, we uh, can provide various concrete implementations. What is important are three methods. An observer will always have a method called update that gets called by the subject. The subject or observant is um, has a list of observers. Obviously, not necessarily. You can do whatever you need to be. Need to have two methods: attach and something that we have not shown in here, detach. Some people call it register and register. And then uh, there needs to be a method called notify. Some people call it notify all observers. Doesn't matter. But three meaningful method one is to add observer another is to remove observer and third one is to notify and then whatever whenever the subjects state changes that state change is going to trigger the notify observer which will call all the observers in the list that's how the observer gets to know what does it call it calls the update method there are variations sometimes it will just call update method with uh, the change state sometimes it may call it update method with uh, this reference depending on how much you want to expose the state changes of okay uh, looks like I have a, a question uh, action listener is it a observer pattern uh, question is from from Sonal and if Sonal if you could uh, be more uh, precise about an action listener um, you know in which context because there are many different action listeners that I kind of know of so if you could be more specific than that I will definitely be answering the question okay and uh, so only suggesting that in Java so so even in Java action listener classes come in many different forms uh, let's say if it is a um, if it is an event processing unit maybe if you are looking at uh, a JSF style all right so a JSF style will have uh, action listeners for on click. It is a variation of um, variation of observer pattern in that you are subscribing yourself to a on click event or a change event. Um, but depending on which framework you go to, some of the frameworks may not allow you to subscribe to the actions more than once. Right. There can only perhaps be one action listener to a on click event. Uh, a limited form of uh, observer pattern in a generic form of observer pattern. There can be any number of observers that you can uh, subscribe. OK, so the answer is kind of yes. If you are looking for only yes, no kind of answer. But remember variation and that's the beauty of it. Once you understand a specific pattern, you will understand all, all its variations. So for example, um, Sonal here could quickly relate that maybe action listener is is kind of an observer pattern. So when tomorrow she goes and kind of maintains a bigger system, she looks at it and knows, okay, this is an observer pattern. So many standard practices around observer pattern will apply. 
so uh, with that particular note uh, let's conclude I, I will take questions so don't don't worry about that uh, I'll wait to see if there are questions and I think I've answered all but let's say let's conclude so what did we uh, what is the takeaway from this session first uh, if I may conclude that way design patterns are important if you want to be a good software developer right it is it is an important arsenal or tool that you would want want to have and it is gonna gonna, gonna complement your experience you're gonna really learn from somebody else's experience and then enhance on it so you can build very good design it's gonna give you those tools which will allow you to be a better designer if you are into a maintenance kind of project, it's going to give you a common nomenclature by which you can relate to an existing uh, software. If you are into a uh, design phases, perhaps a junior designer or a developer and some architect comes and throws you saying, OK, use a leader follower pattern. I mean, it will be embarrassing situation if you don't know what that means, right? Maybe a leader part leader follower is a less known uh, says use a command pattern and well you understand you kind of know what the command pattern is go implement it uh, show it to your architect and says no 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 this is not a command pattern you've done it maybe incorrectly versus you implement a good command pattern and you know you get appreciated right but what is important all these things yes is is there. What is important is really a software is an art and a science. Art comes naturally if you are into it, but a science part of which can really be learned. Design patterns are one such element in that science. Okay. Rahul has a question uh, wherein uh, the question is an example of an action listener which does not follow. Uh, observer pattern uh, so Rahul first thing that I would want to be clear is that action listener is an observer pattern just that it is in a limited form for example in some cases and remember action listener is a very very generic term uh, action listeners in some cases you cannot subscribe more than one action listener on a particular event if you are not able to subscribe more than one it may not be the truest form of observer pattern was the point that I was driving but I do not intend to say that action listener is not it is observer pattern okay perfect uh, any other question before I uh, maybe conclude and call it over and while you do so uh, we did try to cover some of the patterns um, you might you might be interested in knowing that um, there is a uh, entire four week course that we do on design patterns and uh, we kind of go in the same manner that we have done today uh, in addition to that we also uh, show some code examples run it tweak it on the fly if you have questions on that we actually code it while you are with us and then all these code examples are, are with you there are assignments that we give quizzes and there is already once once you are through with that four week course you may uh, you will be assigned a project uh, which you will have to complete and the project really gets graded and only then we can issue a certificate of you know completion um, that certificate carries some value in the sense that your current employer or future employer can actually call up a direct guy and say has this guy really done it and how did he do it uh, Rahul has a question which I'll take is uh, any pattern which is more uh, perhaps important than other uh, which is more important to learn uh, which you have seen a used in many examples um, well I can tell you that the the largest pattern that is being used and it is really an idiom is a singleton pattern but uh, it will be a wrong statistics to go against because many people use singleton in a wrong manner they they just don't they just want to use it and therefore they end up doing it there's no reason to use singleton in some of the cases uh, the simpler patterns like fact 
symmetry which are easy to grasp the observer are more prevalent uh, because people can do it that does not mean that they are important than other in fact i'll tell you the more complex pattern is to understand more powerful it is because you can really solve a specific problem right in other cases if you don't grasp that pattern one of the example is a leader follower wherein we don't even talk about synchronization at all and we are talking about concurrency pattern here okay imagine a case where you are talking about multi-threading and you don't need synchronization how powerful that could be right it's just that people don't know about it therefore they don't use it so rahul my request to you will be uh, you know what is important uh, does not necessarily mean that it is very prevalent okay uh, sonal has another question why do we actually use singleton pattern uh, well we use singleton pattern only and only if we want one polymorphic behavior and second we want a single instance of that particular type in your application scope uh, and uh, sonal has a subsequent question perhaps a practical example that i can quote and i am presuming that it is with respect to singleton the best use of singleton is almost always a primitive level of cache implementation you want to cache some data you know keep holding it maybe you your application has some sort of pick list right maybe the states of a particular country right or languages spoken for a particular application that's a cache data pretty much static uh, or semi-static you can hold it in cache in such cases you might want to do singleton there's some other cases where you want to route all your requests through the single uh, request processor in which case you might want to also do the singleton you really want to implement something like a front controller uh, and force it so that all requests are going through the single instance and therefore you want to do some sort of request tracking another example of singleton although there are better ways of doing it but yeah uh if i'm pronouncing it right lisa rani uh, wants to talk about a factory design pattern uh, well uh, we may not be able to cover it in depth but i'll tell you a brief summary a factory design pattern is going to say okay if you need a car just tell me what kind of car and i'll create one for you right or if you uh, no you seems to be a fresher so i'll not be talking about spring in that case uh, Rahul has a question uh, looks like specific to Java uh, how to implement a single pattern a singleton pattern using enum or using class synchronized method which one is better Rahul the answer uh, is it depends if you want to do a lazy initialization you can't do it with enum but if you want it to be a eager initialization you can always do it with enum which seems to be very popular uh, these days with java community and um, i'm okay if you want to use it with enums too just remember just be careful uh, enums get initialized eagerly and uh, you may end up causing more trouble if you don't initialize it properly uh, if it is just going to be something about caching which does not have to do any kind of initialization enums may seem to be a better choice okay so we are about uh, 12 13 minutes uh, about time um, but i i liked the the discussion and the level of interaction uh, and um, if you if you think that this was useful that you know that made my day or that kind of i spend my time uh, more productively is what I'll say and uh, with the hope that I'll see some of you in the in the design pattern uh, course that we do uh, in case you know you find it useful and want to le learn more uh, I'll hope to see you uh, next time around when you do the um, that that design pattern course with that note uh, I say thank you for uh, listening to me being patient uh, being interactive uh, be you being a good audience and um, have a nice day or nice evening based on based on where you are thank you guys